We have all been talking a lot this week about HGTV's decision to pull the plug on a show called Flip It Forward, which was to be hosted this fall by brothers David and Jason Benham. Now, as we know, they are pro-life, pro-marriage Christians. Nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, the pro-LGBT hack site that went after the Benhams actually used an interview I did with David Benham a few years back to try to unfairly spike his reputation. Now, ironically, as you've heard me play excerpts from that 2012 interview over the week, David said nothing wrong and was even taken out of context. So I am just very honored today to have with us David and Jason Benham, and they're going to share some of their thoughts on what has just happened to them. And David, Jason, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Janet, for having us. We appreciate it. And thank you for getting us into all this trouble. <laughs> you know what? I am I am so sorry. I, I should have warned you about that hack site because they love Christian bashing. It's what they do. Hey, you know what? This, this is Jason. I, I, I want to tell you, not only did you get uh, David in trouble, but David got me in trouble. I, I was telling somebody the other day, my dad and my brother are out there saying all the stuff they're saying, and, and I'm getting lugged in here and hadn't said squat. I'm the only innocent one in the whole bunch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. I know. I just was so horrified, David and Jason, you too, that that interview was used against you because, David, you said nothing wrong. I mean, they quoted you out of context. You were talking about the darkness of the culture and why the church needed to repent. I don't know why that was so hard to grasp. All they had to do was listen to the whole thing in context. Well, it's it's easy to grasp when we understand that they're trying to create their own narrative. Yep. Uh, he who defines wins. And so they want to define the story, those uh, that would seek to uh, marginalize Christians and demonize them and create them and make them as, as hate mongers and, and other things. And so they've created a, a narrative about the Benham brothers that just isn't true. And uh, our dad taught us when we were kids that you can state facts and 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 actually make your own truth out of those facts. Yep. You can just create your story, and, and that's what's happened. And the one thing that that is was the most disconcerting was that when they started taking things from my dad and making them uh, seem as if they came from me, and then they started taking word. I don't know where they got some of the things that they were saying. And and what Jason, I really want to communicate now. Our first line of defense is to is to set the record straight with how we feel about people. Because we love God, we love people. Yeah. We, but, but, and Jesus loves all people, but he does not love all ideas. Right. And he certainly doesn't love agendas that seek to uh, take and force uh, the faith of Christians uh, to be silent. And so that's, that was really where the heart of this is, is, is that it's this agenda that we're going after, and, and unfortunately... Uh, Jason and I were, you know, we were, we were its target. But you know what? We're not victims. We simply spoke the truth, and the Lord said that things like this would happen. And and one of the things that's really encouraging to my brother and I, though, is we recognize this as God's hewing in our life. God uses these opportunities for Jason and I to really refine our message to make sure that we're coming across. Uh, Speaking the truth with gentleness and respect, as First Peter three fifteen and sixteen says, and so it's healing us and forcing us further down on our knees and on our faces before God, because we truly want to see all people set free through the loving power of Jesus Christ. That's our goal. That's our number one goal. And so, I think nothing but good is going to come from this, with or without a show. Well, let me I think ask. That was the most hateful yeah. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to stop that spewing of the hate there, David. That was that was horrible. No, I mean that that's what's so ironic about the whole thing is that everything that you told me and everything that I've read, you've said, and I rewatched everything and I re-listened to everything, and I thought these are godly men who love the Lord, who love people, and are called to tell the truth about saving the unborn and uh, you know rescuing those by the grace of God who are you know trapped in the homosexual lifestyle or in sin of any kind. I mean, it's not even about homosexuality. And that the whole thing you said in that interview, David, you listed no fault divorce. You talked about abortion. You said these are things for which the church needs to repent. You weren't even talking about the gay agenda. It exists in our churches, and that's why judgment begins in the house of the Lord. It begins with us first, Janet, and and we can easily point our finger at the culture and and uh, talk about uh, homosexuals or, or anyone else like that, 
but we've got to look at ourselves. I mean, we've got divorce is just as high in the church as it is anywhere else. Yeah. We're, we're, we've got adultery in the church. We have pornography. I mean, how about fatherlessness in our culture? It exists, and, and the church, according to First Timothy, is the pillar and support of the truth. Amen. And you can only imagine if that pillar and support is fractured, what's going to happen to the culture? And so what ends up happening is what we've done, especially many people on the right, is we're sound asleep. We think everybody's right except or everybody's wrong except for us. Hang on just a moment. I hate to cut it off there, but we've got to go to a quick commercial. We'll be back. David and Jason Benham with us. We'll return right after this. Well, I know how many Christians are just like me this week, just angry at what HGTV has done to David and Jason Benham, some godly Christian brothers who were to have this show called Flip It Forward. It was to debut in the fall, and they pulled the plug after a hack. Anti-Christian website went after not only the brothers, but, but their dad, which makes no sense to me other than they were trying to create a situation where there was guilt by association. And some of the things that they even said in this article, David and Jason, weren't even true. I mean, this is the thing that drives me crazy. Obviously, it was a hack job to try to pull the plug on you. Now, did HGTV, when you guys sat down with them to you know hammer out the deal for this show, did they know you were Christians? How much did you talk about all this? Uh, HGTV, actually, let me, let me say this real quick. You said that there's a bunch of Christians that are angry at HGTV. The one thing that David and I are not is angry with HGTV because we know that this, this is not them. This is a full out frontal assault of the enemy. And, and we know that HGTV is not our enemy. And when they first sat down with us, you know, we said in our statement that if our faith cost us a television show, then so be it. But what people need to know is our faith brought us the television show because they were attracted to us as who we were as people and the business that God has so incredibly blessed for us in real estate over the last 11 years, and they were so drawn to that. They're they're, they're a smart network. They sunk, uh, you know, a lot of money into this project, and they wouldn't have done that had they not first vetted us. And so they did, and they saw the uh, the things that David had said Uh, right, you know, a year and a half ago they saw those things. We went in, we talked with them, we explained ourselves to them, let them know that we love all people. And, you know, they made a business decision at that point to, to hire us on as hosts. Wow. Because they knew there was no hate inside of us. Right. And uh, But then I, you know, I gave a good warning and said, but I just want you to know, if we're hosts, the firestorm will come. Because this is not something that uh, that's going to go easy on, on some folks. And sure enough, when the, when the heat kicked up, uh, you know, the, the pressure was just too much to bear. And that's why we say our heart breaks for HG. We love those folks, and we've, we've got good friends in there. And uh, they, they were simply bullied, pushed into a corner, and popped right in the face. And, uh, and you know, they, they just... Uh, they well, they, 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 heard from, they heard from one small segment of our culture. They didn't hear from the rest of the culture. I mean, because we hadn't even started the show yet. People... Yeah. The several folks I even saw on CNN this morning that they had the Duck Dynasty group right next to my brother and I. The difference between us and Duck Dynasty is obviously the fact that they got nice beards. I can't grow something like that, but <laughs> I wish I could. But is that they had multiple seasons and multiple millions of people supporting them. Jason and I, we didn't even get out of the batter's box. I mean, we were out before we finished our swing. Yeah. So, but that's uh, how it was with David all the way through his minor league career. I mean, he was yeah. out before he even stepped in the batter's box. Oh, boy. What, but you had a contract with HGTV. Is the pulling of the plug on the show a violation of the terms of the contract, or was there an out clause for them? Well, you know, we, we, the, our attorney is handling all that. I, I don't really know. I, I, uh, we're we're kind of staying out of that mix, and we'll let the, the attorneys figure that out. Sure. I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay. But well, one thing is true. Six families came to my brother and I uh, as a part of this set uh, to help them flip houses. And we were in the middle. We were actually probably four or five days away from completing one of the houses. And uh, so Jason and I uh, are obligated. We're going to help them finish okay. with or without HGTV. Wow. Now, HGTV well, HG is going to say HG will pay. They'll okay. pay. They'll pay for the construction that was going on, which they're, they're an admirable network for that. Uh, but Jason and I will definitely help them. They came to us to learn how to flip houses, and that's exactly what we're going to finish. You know, in baseball, when you hit a ball right back to the pitcher, you have a choice. Do you walk back to the dugout or do you run through first base? 
we were taught to run through first base. So that's what we're doing. We're running through first base with or without the cameras. Well, I, I'm curious, when you were told that the plug was pulled on your show, what reason did they give you? Well, you know, uh, they talked to David and I both, and uh, we were on the phone, and I just before we called, I told David, I said, hey, we're about to get canned. And he's like, you think so? I said, just watch. And sure enough, they just said, hey, guys, we have to part ways. And um, that was it. Literally, there's no explanation. And uh, and but we knew what was going on, and we didn't want to prod in and pry and and make it tougher on them than what it had to be. So we just said we understand it's a business decision. It's not personal. We love you guys. We're going to honor the network, and uh, and and we're just sad to see us sad to see this relationship end and like we, this. And and we told them. And we told them. We said, look, we have no intentions to to go public and smear you guys or do anything. I said, but but we do feel that you got bullied. Yep. And I remember the president said, well, thank you, thank you for that. And and then within uh, 45 minutes or an hour in, after HGTV published uh, or they, they made the statement on Facebook, it was, ju- I mean, it was a media firestorm. And Jason and I pulled up the Right Wing Watch article. We never even, I thought that it was just based on the comments that, that I had originally made on your show, uh, that they were letting us go. Then I look, read this, we read this article and I'm like, what? I know. Those are lies. I know. That is wrong. So we sent them an email and said, hey, we just read all of this and it is lies and we want you to know as of 6 p.m. tonight, we are setting this record straight. Good. And it ticked us off. That yeah. really got us mad. It's like, okay, if you're going to lie, I'm going to stand against lies. Well, it, it wasn't just a lie. It's the fact that we lost our job because of a lie. Yeah, now, and they don't course, care. We have other means of we have other means of income. We're not crying poor here, but yep. you know, we we would have uh, liked to have had the opportunity to let them know that none of that stuff was true. Well, here's it's not right yeah, for America, yeah. and it's not right for our kids, our, no. our children as a, as a whole, as a generation. Well, you've got a whole cottage industry that is out to destroy Christians, and they they love it. I mean, this site, they love it. I went through, and I'll, you know, this is kind of interesting. Yesterday, when I was going through the article, we went to every original article that they cited to make these claims against you and your dad and found libel. I mean, li- you could sue them for libel. I'm not sure that you would, but you're right. Well, these were lies. We've, we've for sure been approached by firms that uh, that recognize that that can can in fact happen. But the, the most important thing for David and I is to, one, let people know that we love Jesus, we love all people, but two, we don't love all ideas, nor does God. And when an idea sets itself up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then we, we need to destroy that. And this agenda that says uh, that, that you... You know, we can have two beliefs, but if you don't believe what I believe, then you better shut your mouth. Well, no, that's not right. No. And uh, and we're not going to just turn around and let that go away without trying to put a stranglehold on it. Right. And you look at all the people we now have, the Brendan Ike situation. You know, Brendan Ike, we have Duck Dynasty, we have Craig James, we had Frank Turek, all of these people who are pro-marriage, who are not allowed to do things that have no relationship to marriage you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't have a real estate show because you're pro-life and pro-marriage. There's not even a connection there. It's a thought crime. That's where we are as Christians. Yeah. And it, it, ultimately, this is playing itself out. The good thing is, is we still have the freedom of speech legally in this country, but it's playing itself out in the in the free enterprise, free market right now. But it will ultimately segue back into politics and become the law of the land if we don't do something about it. And so... Jason and I, you know, we regret the fact that we, we, what we were super excited about was that uh, America was going to come into our home and see how we are with our wives and see how we're raising our kids and see us interacting with others. As a matter of fact, HG, um, they cast a broad net for casting, and if homosexual man or a lesbian woman or anybody like that were to uh, cast for the show, they asked us, would you sell to them? Would you help them? We said, of course we would. Sure. And we do that in reality. Now. That's right. We do it in reality. And we, we use it as a ministry tool. So, you know, it, it's just one of these things that what we regret is that America doesn't get a chance to see our show. And, by the way, we were five weeks into filming, and we had some incredible producers in place, and they were talking all about how incredible the footage was and how this was just going to be a killer show. And, you know, they HG has focus groups. They knew this was going to be a good show. 
they weren't going to invest the kind of money into it that they had put into it without doing their homework. So, unfortunately, America won't get some good family programming, but that's okay. Jason and I will get right back to the grindstone and continue to work in real estate here and loving our families and glorifying the Lord the best we can. Well, you guys have such a great attitude. I, You know, and it just shines through the love of Christ when you're talking, and I think it's an encouragement to everybody. What about the fact that you've now got this organization that has put out a petition? There are thousands of Christians and pro-marriage people who are signing this petition to get you back on HGTV. Would you be open to that if they came back to you and did sort of an A&E uh, situation on you and said, all right, w- we've changed our mind, come on back? Would you go back? Of course we would. Uh, you know, God is bigger than all of this. And David and I never went and looked for a reality show. It came to us. And so if it comes back to us, we'll take whatever hand God deals to us. And, uh, and, and it would be kind of fun. We, we, uh, we were really enjoying the process. It was hard work. I mean, I've never had so many cameras all over me in my life, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And we, we would embrace that with joy. Well, what sort well, of opportunity do you think this whole experience has given to both of you to share the gospel in a new way? I mean, because you've got the spotlight on you now. Well, what, what's really interesting is that um, this gives us the opportunity to share the gospel in the middle of a cultural firestorm. I mean, it's one thing, thing to share the gospel when you're doing an outreach or you're feeding uh, the poor or something like this, but it's another to share the gospel in the middle of a firestorm. And the most important thing is to actually live the gospel, to truly love others as Christ loves us. And Jason and I say, if Christ Jesus can love sinners like me and my brother, then he loves everyone. And if he set us free, he can set everyone free. And and, and this is the reason, this is the, the crux of the issue, is that we do recognize this agenda, and we see that it's got a stranglehold on our nation, and we also see it's got a stranglehold on so many people. Yeah. And And our desire is that men and women be set free, all of us, that he, that Jesus set us free and completely changed our lives. And, and, and our story was uh, when we were interviewed um, a, a while ago about your reality show, we said, listen, my da- our dad was 28 years old and was a drunken bum in Orlando, Florida, had actually told my mom to get an abortion when, my, when she was pregnant with my brother and I. She said, I'm leaving you. And he sobered up real fast and said, what's it going to take? to keep you here and she said you go to church with me and he got radically saved he gave his heart to christ and everything changed our entire family changed and his heart turned back to the home and the home turned back to him and christ saved our family and that's the reason why we have a show the reason why hg was attracted to the fact that we're fathers that we're twin brothers who love each other and are highly competitive but our competition is to make each other better who are husbands and who are dedicated professionals to serving others. It's because of Jesus Christ. Well, you guys are an inspiration. Well, I would, you, I'm so sorry we're out of time. But David and Jason okay. Benham, God bless you guys. I'm sorry for my role in this, but love you guys and support you, and we'll be praying for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janet. Likewise. Thank All you. right. Amen. Thank you.